Hey guys, it's Connor, and today I'm going to show you a really simple cloning or ghosting effect that you often see in music videos. There's a few different ways to go about this, so I'm going to show you a handful of options and different styles to get the results that you want. We're going to be working with this clip from a music video that I shot, and I want to add this sort of clone, delay, ghosting effect to it, because it's during a build-up section, and I think that'll help make it stand out. So I'm going to go over to Effects, and I'm going to type in Echo, and we're going to go ahead and drag that onto our clip. Already you can see that this has changed our frame, but just for the sake of really wrapping your head around how this effect works, I'm going to scroll down and the first thing I'm going to do is change the echo operator, which is essentially the blend mode, to maximum. I'll explain why in just a minute, but it's going to make this whole explanation a lot clearer. If I play this back, you can see that it sort of drags and smears and it almost looks like you've got a really, really slow shutter speed. But if we pause, you can see that there's actually a duplicate of each frame being overlaid onto the original clip. So here you can see our vocalist has two separate hands, two separate thumbs there. There's two different guitar necks here. So it's creating this duplicate clone on top of our original footage. There's two ways to stylize this effect a little bit more. And the first is messing with the echo time. Essentially what this effect is doing is it's going back in time and selecting a frame from earlier in the clip. So by messing with the echo time, we're dictating how far back are we grabbing that frame that we're gonna overlay onto our original footage. How far back are we grabbing that clone? The default is only like one or two frames back, but if we set this to, let's say 0 0.07, now you can see our frame has shifted and there's more of a distance between the original footage and the clone. Now if we play it back, you can see the effect is a lot more extreme and the double that we're using, the clone, is a lot more distinct and clear from the original clip. Quick disclaimer here about how you apply this effect. It's really important that you note the difference between applying it to a nested sequence and applying it to individual clips. I've applied it to a nested sequence here, so if you scroll through, remember how this effect works. It grabs a frame from further back in time. If I go to where it changes shots here, I've got the original clip, which is the new shot of the vocalist, and then I've also got the clone of the previous clip, which is of the drummer. So if you wanted to avoid this issue where you've got two shots overlaid on top of each other, you would have to apply this effect to each individual clip instead. If you're applying it to all the clips instead of the sequence, what it's going to do is as soon as it changes shots, you're gonna see just your original footage until a certain period of time passes where it can grab a clip from earlier in that shot. I'll make this simple with an example. If we set our echo time to half a second, then when we play back our clip that we've applied this to, it's gonna look normal until half a second in because it doesn't have any data from before that to grab from to apply this clone effect onto. So keep in mind, this reaches into the past on our clip and applies a clone of that. So if we don't have any information prior to that, you're not going to see a clone. So just keep that in mind. Super easy way around that. Make your clip start a little bit earlier, apply the effect, render it out, and then you can trim it down to whatever you need. All right, that's enough disclaimers. So the second thing that we can do to modify this is we can change the amount of clones or echoes that we have on each clip. So I'm going to change this to three and I'm going to put it back to the default echo time. And we'll see how that looks. So again, we have a more extreme result, but instead of it being a more defined clone, we have a less defined clone, but more of them. It's got a deeper smearing effect that goes on for longer. I'm gonna set these back to default. And remember I talked about changing the echo operator. Again, this is essentially the blend mode, how you want the clone to interact with your original clip. There's only a handful of options here, but maximum is to me the most natural look because it's just a clone. It's the most transparent looking way to do it but the default is actually the add blend mode. The add effect is literally like adding two clips together. You can see this is a much brighter exposure. It's a much higher contrast. I like this look a lot for things that are a little dreamier or a little more supernatural, like a literal ghost effect or some sort of vintage effect or a memory or something like that. I know we already talked about it, but just a reminder, there's no effect on the first frame of this clip because again, we have to wait for 0 0.033 seconds to pass. I know you, you know how to fix it. You know how to address that issue. 
just a reminder, I don't want anybody thinking that Adobe's being weird or their graphics card is melting or anything like that. Now this is obviously being applied to the whole frame, but maybe we don't want that. Maybe we just wanna see a clone of a certain object or person. Now, if you didn't plan to do this and you're just dealing with footage like this in post, your only option, unfortunately, is to manually mask out that object or person and apply the effect that way. It's really time consuming, I know, but that's your only option here. However, you can shoot for an effect like this. And let me show you what that looks like. At its core, the echo effect only works based on motion. If there's no motion in a frame, you're not gonna see any difference because there is no difference from one frame to the next. So one way to approach this would be to put your camera on a tripod, lock it off, and then the only thing that's gonna have this effect is whatever is moving in frame. Your environment won't be moving because there's no camera motion whatsoever. So you can just put it in a room have one person move about and they'll have the clone effect but the background won't because it will obviously be still. However, camera movement is awesome. So if we want to be able to move the camera around and still have that same effect, a white psych or blue screen, green screen, any sort of consistent colored background is a great way to do that because there's no detail. So when it goes to grab the previous frame of white, it's just more white. So let me show you what that looks like here. I've applied the echo effect. So now we're only seeing this echo on them because they are the only things that have motion and are different from frame to frame, whether it be the fact that they are moving or just the fact that the camera's moving around them. So really quick, let's recap. If you want this effect applied on the entire frame, easy, you know how to do that, just slap the effect on and you're good. If you only want it to apply to just part of your frame, you can either mask it out manually if you have a lot of detail going on and a lot of motion, or you can shoot for this effect, meaning either put your camera on a tripod and make sure that the only thing moving in the frame is the thing that you want the effect on, or shoot on a plain background and then you can move your camera as much as you want. The only thing that's gonna have the effect are the things that have motion in them, the things that have detail in them. If you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate you helping me back by subscribing and tuning in for more future videos like this. But until then, I'll see you next time.